Hi everybody, this is Gigi from Kauai Community College. In this video, we will show you, I will show you how the chain rule comes about and I'm going to give you a couple of examples of how to apply the chain rule, okay? And this is a chain rule for taking the derivative. So the chain rule is this right here in the box. It it's, has to do with um, taking the derivative of a composite function. So then you may ask, what is a composite function? A composite function is where you have a function f, uh, g of x uh, inside a function f of x, right? It has an outside function and an inside function. That's what um, a composite function is. So the chain rule said, well, it said what it said. Uh, what I'm going to do is I am going to show you how to get um, this yellow box, meaning I am going to show you um, the proof of this chain rule. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and minimize this so you don't see that anymore. And um, I might as well just go ahead and delete that. Uh, what we're going to do is we are going to take a look at a composite function. And then we're going to take the derivative using the limit definition. And then we're going to arrive at the um, equation of, as to the rule as to how to apply the chain rule, what the chain rule is. Okay, so suppose you are starting out with a function called f of g of x. Okay, and we want to take the derivative of that with respect to x. Okay. Now, by definition of limit, um, by the limit definition of uh, the derivative, it will be limit as h goes to zero of, we would say change in y over change in x. Changing x is the h, you know, the distance between x1 and x2. And then the uh, change in y would be the y values. Uh, the difference in the y value. So g, f of g of x plus h minus f of g of x. Okay, that's the def the limit definition of the derivative. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to multiply by 1. Um, and I'm going to somehow arrive at the answer that is in that yellow box. Okay, so that's that's my goal right there. I'm going to show you where the chain rule comes from. Okay, so now multiplying by one, and the one that is going to help me um, accomplish this goal is g of x plus h minus g of x. And you may ask, well, why? You will see. You will see how it works out wonderfully. Um, Multiplying by 1, it's legal to multiply by 1 because I'm not changing the value of that, okay? So uh, what I'm going to do then is I am going to distribute because here I have a binomial multiplied by the binomial on the numerator. So I'm going to have to distribute. That's going to give me four terms, and I better leave some room because that's going to be a lot of writing there. I'm going to go ahead and write the denominator first. That will be h multiplied by g of x plus h minus g of x. Okay. And the uh, numerator will have four terms. So let's go ahead and distribute that, starting with the first term being f of g of x plus h multiplied by g of x plus h minus f of g of x plus h multiplied by g of x minus f of g of x multiplied by g of x plus h. And then negative times the negative is a positive f of g of x multiply by g of x. Wow, I fit that in there. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is still limit as h goes to 0. 
the denominator is still h g of x plus h minus g of x. The numerator, I'm going to do a little factor by grouping here. I'm going to do first term here and the third term there. So in those yellow boxes, we have g of x plus h in common. So we factor that out. What we have inside is f of g of x plus h minus f of g of x. Then I'm going to go ahead and group the red boxes together. And I'm going to go ahead and factor out a negative g of x. That's what's in common. What will be left is f of g of x plus h. And that's the positive, and I factor out a negative, so that must be a negative right here. f of g of x. Okay, so um, how convenient is that? Look at the yellow and the red. The yellow and the red are exactly the same, right? That's how factor by grouping work. You factor by grouping so that you can create a common factor. So um, the yellow and the red, we factor that out because that now is the common factor between those two terms there. So we're going to go ahead and factor out f of g of x plus h minus f of g of x. Factor that part out. What is left in the inside? g of x plus h minus g of x. On the denominator, I still have h multiplied by g of x plus h minus g of x. And you may notice how I just wrote the h on sort of the right side of that expression. And the reason why is because the limit as h go to zero of g of x plus h minus g of x all divided by h is the derivative of g. That's what the definition of the derivative is, right? Limit as h go to zero of g of x plus h minus g of x all over h. That's the definition of the derivative of g. This right here is the definition of the derivative of f of g of x. If you just kind of think about this right here, this would be like f of a minus f of b, right, divided by a minus b. That is uh, change in y over change in x. And change in y over change in x. And the limit as h go to 0, that defines the derivative. The derivative of what? Of the function g f of g of x. So, the chain rule says the derivative, when you have f of g of x, and you want to take the derivative of it, it will equal to the derivative of f evaluated at g of x multiplied by the derivative of the inside function, g of x. So, in shortcut, 
we will just say it's the derivative of the outside function evaluated at g of x multiplied by the derivative of the inside function. And that's what the yellow box said. The derivative of a composite function is the derivative of f of x the evaluated at g of x multiplied by the derivative of the inside function. How does it work? I'll give you an example. Actually, maybe two. Okay, so here it is. Example one. Suppose the function that we have, let's call this h of x, is, say, 3x squared plus 5x raised to the 10th power. So here, if we think about a composite function, f of g of x, the outside function f is y to the 10th power. Okay, that's the outside function. And then the inside function is 3x squared plus 5x. Okay, so here we would say the derivative of h is going to equal to, and to take that derivative, the derivative of y to the 10 power, you bring the 10 down and then you minus 1. So that will be 10 times what? To the 9th power. We are evaluating, right, 10y to the 9th power. But what are we evaluating it at? At g of x, which is the inside function. So that stays the same, 3 squared plus 3x squared plus 5x. So that's the derivative of f of x evaluated at g of x multiplied by the inside function, the derivative of the inside function, which would be 6x minus plus 5. Okay, and that is your answer. What can you do with it? I don't know, multiply it out or not. That looks pretty simplified. That's the derivative of h of x, okay? And as you can see here, this is the derivative of f evaluated at g of x multiplied by the derivative of g evaluated at x. All right, so let's look at another example. Say f of x is equal to e to the cosined x. Okay, so we see that there is an e to some power, that's the outside function, and the derivative of e to some power is itself. Okay, and then the inside, so this is the outside function, the inside function is cosine of x. And the derivative of cosine of x is negative sine x. Okay, so the derivative of this composite function is going to be the derivative of the outside function evaluated at g of x which is itself. So the derivative f prime of x is equal to e to the what? Cosine of x. Multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which is a derivative of cosine, and that is negative sine x. Okay, what can we do with that? Um, 
about really nothing. What we can do is rewrite it nicely, in, uh, meaning just put the negative here, negative e to the cosine x multiplied by sine x. And that is about all we could do. And so that is how we take a derivative of a composite function. Okay, well, maybe one more. How about this one? Uh, f of x is equal to sine of 5x squared plus 3x plus 2. Okay, so the outside function is sine. Okay, so sine of x, the outside function is sine of something. And we know the derivative of that outside function is cosine of that thing. And then the inside function is 5x squared plus 3x plus 2. And the derivative of it is 10x plus 3. Okay, so um, the derivative of f of x is going to be the derivative of the outside function, which would be cosine. Cosine of what? Of g of x, which is this right here. Cosine of 5x squared plus 3x plus 2. The input stays the same for the outside function multiply by the derivative of the inside function. And the derivative of the inside function, as we said, is 10x plus 3. And that is how the chain rule works.